you're gonna die. But if you go back, why can't you think of you? Let's see how about column form at this phase. down again. And regeneration would be nice. You can call Coco and Taunt. Fist to, fist to the face. Throws him win, can you keep us alive? Or you can need a bit more. but not so not so cool and cal calculating Now we are back in the business. Un unless the game actually glitches out.
right new turn or let's say new 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 course of action uh, It's going after Morgan, yes, it's, it's going after Morgan. That's... <laughs> that's a... Quite a flip. Way, but I, I think we can uh, we can manage. We can we can manage. Yeah. All right, and this spirit form is okay. He's prepared to blow up. We need a bit more help here. Here. The point here is that uh, this form is actually more resistant to magic, so that's why we are going to Lizard. Oh, can we escape? Can we can try? Probably not. I think I'm going to turn into a Yourself to free us both when you return. Uh, 
the litany of a drama from my He's so horrified. body. It will protect you from the worst of the blood magic. Your body? I cannot go with you. I have been here far too long. For you, it would have been an afternoon's nap. Your body won't have wasted away in the real world while your spirit lays in the hands of the demon. <laughs> I don't have time to leave with you. I'm leaving. Do you, do you think you're going to die? Every minute I was here, the sloth demon was feeding off of me. Using my life to fuel the nightmares of this realm. There is so little of me left. I was never meant to save the circle or survive its troubles. I am dying. It is as simple as that. Thank you, but it is too late for me. I do not fear what may come. They say we return to the Maker in death. And that isn't such a terrible thing. My only regret is that I could not save the circle. But you. Alright, we have a evil wizard. We need, we need to actually win. When you return. It is important. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. What about you? I can rest easy knowing you will save the circle. I'm not a hero. Perhaps trying to be one was cool. Dark people can do great things. Greater acts of heroism, eh? You may be right. Before I was taken to the circle, my mother said I was meant for greatness. I would be more than my ancestors could have ever dreamed. I hope I haven't disappointed her. <laughs> well, you died in quite a unique manner. It is time for us both to be on our way. Remember the litany of Adrala. The circle is all that matters now. Thank you, and goodbye, friend. This trick again? I know what you are. It won't work. I will stay strong. The boy is exhausted. And this cage, I, I've never seen anything like it. Rest easy. Help is here. Ugh, enough visions. If anything in you is human, ugh, kill me now and stop this game. You broke the others, but I will stay strong for my sake. Well, there's filthy blood mages getting in my head. I, I will not break. I'd rather die. Where, where are the other survivors? Others? What are you talking about? Irving and the other mages who fought Aldred. Where are they? They are in the harrowing chamber. The sounds coming up from there. Oh, Maker. We must hurry. They are in grave danger, I am sure of it. You can't save them! You don't know what they've become. What do you do? They've been surrounded by, by blood mages whose wicked fingers snake into your mind and corrupt your thoughts. His hatred of mages is so intense. The memory of his friend's deaths is still fresh in his mind. He suffered pain and anguish like few have had to endure. That and his lust for revenge have confused the issue. Do not presume to judge me, mage! I am thinking clearly, for perhaps the first time in my life. To ensure this horror is ended, to guarantee that no abominations or blood mages live, you must kill everyone up there! It is your choice to make, but I beg you to consider what I have to say. You cannot tell Maleficarum by sight. Just one could influence the mind of a king, of a grand cleric. I am just willing to see the painful truth, which you are content to ignore. 
Ah, but what can I do? As you can see, I am in no position to directly influence your actions, though I would love to deal with the mages myself. <laughs> what cage is Aldred's doing, or one of his mages? Once they're dead, I will be free. No one ever listens. Not until it's far too late. Make her turn his gaze on you. I hope your compassion hasn't doomed us all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a prison, alright. As you say. Okay, there's a party going on. What we have here. An intruder. I bid you welcome. Care to join in our revels? Oh, very observant. I'm quite impressed you're still alive. Unfortunately, that must mean you killed my servants. Yep, all of them. Ah, well, they are probably better off dying in the service of their betters than living with the terrible responsibility of independence. And freeing them in the process. A mage is but the larval form of something greater. Your chantry vilifies us, calls us abomination. When we have truly reached our full potential. I like the decorations you have been doing here. The Chantry has them convinced. They deny themselves the pleasure of becoming something glorious. Maybe the Templars were right. There's nothing glorious about what you've become, Aldred. <laughs> Aldred? He is gone. I am Aldred, and yet not Aldred. I am more. I could give you this gift ring. You and all the mages. It would be so much easier if you just accepted it. But some people can be so stubborn. Fight if you must. It will just make my victory all the sweeter. Don't forget the litany. It will thwart Aldred's attempts to control the mages and win this fight for us. That <laughs> time when healer goes down. That's that's kind of the end of it. So let's not try to tank. That's the most 
danger of opponents here, so... Trying something, stop him. Okay, that's not very, very good. Right? Good. One blast. Right, right call from being to heal, heal Al Alistair. Okay, so sometimes th this AI actually can can do proper decisions, but not always. Heavy plate armor. Something nice here. Plus 20 fire damage. strength uh, this would be okay for the Alistar but then again we already had a 
armor from the from the DLC, which is pretty pretty okay. Plus one constitution. No. Oh, element boots. Can somebody else use these? Templar armor is actually having pretty good bonuses, like 20% stuck resistance. <laughs> but the Warden Commander armor has a, like plus 15 critical backstack dam damage. I mean, I mean, this is this is beefy, sure, but but the Templar armor might be like would have been like better. Previous fight. You know, well, 36 magic. She has like 35, okay. Close, but not, not, not uh, close enough. Are you all right? I've been better, but I am thankful to be alive. I suppose that is your doing, isn't it, Wynne? I wasn't alone. I had help. The Circle owes both of you a debt we will never be able to repay. Come, the Templars await. We shall let them know that the Tower is once again ours. All right, but please hurry. Gregor should be informed of what happened here as soon as possible. Irving? Make us pray. I did not expect to see you alive. It is over, Gregor. Aldred is dead. Aldred tortured these mages, hoping to break their wills and turn them into abominations. We don't know how many of them have turned. What? Don't be ridiculous. Of course he'll say that. He might be a blood mage. Don't you know what they did? I won't let this happen again. I am the Knight Commander here, not you. Well, what does the Knight Commander we think We have then? won back the tower. I will accept Irving's assurance that all is well. But they may have demons within them, lying dormant, lying in wait. Enough. I have already made my decision. Thank you. You have proven yourself a friend of both the Circle and the Templars. What about the Darkspawn? I promised you aid, but with the Circle restored, my duty is to watch the mages. They are free to help you, however. Speak to them. Yes, Irving. For now, I will have to oversee a sweep of the tower. There may be some survivors, and we should do our best to tend to them. Please excuse me. And Irving, it is good to have you back. Ah, I'm sure we'll be at each other's throats again in no time. Yeah. What do you need? Here we are. The tower in disarray. The circle nearly annihilated. Though it could have been much, much worse. I am glad you arrived when you did. It's almost as though the Maker himself sent you. The least we can do is help you against the Darkspawn. I would hate to survive this, only to be overcome by the blight. Do not underestimate us. Even 
one mage will be a great help to you. You have my word. As first enchanter, the circle will join the Grey Wardens oh, in the good. fight. Good Herbie, news for I change. A quest. I seek leave to follow the Grey Warden. And we, now we get wind. We need you here. The circle needs you. I appreciate the sentiment, Irving. But the circle will do fine without me. The circle has you. This woman is brave and good, and capable of great things. If she will accept my help, I will help her accomplish her goals. You were never one to stay in the tower, when there was adventure to be had elsewhere. Why stay, when I can be of service elsewhere? Then, I give you leave to follow the Grey Warden. But know that you always have a place here. There is much to be done here, and I must go. You must forgive me for not being a proper host. When the time comes, we will stand beside you. Magic Silver. Oh, now... We visit the party bank, camp, bank, camp because everyone is totally broken after fighting so much. I have been studying Mother's Grimoire. Do you wish to hear what I have found? Sure. Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. No, not for nothing. There is much of interest here in her writings, and one thing in particular I find fascinating. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. Oh, if only twere so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout Chastened Legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter. And when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. Nice. Indeed. That is primarily what this tome details. The various daughters that Flemeth has acquired. Their preparation and training. I recognize all of it. I... And to be her next host, this is my purpose. I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. Whatever spark of the demon that made her what she is remains within her, keeps her from dying of old age, but her body deteriorates. Eventually, she would be so wizened as to be senseless and immobile. So, she must seek a new body, a fresh body, and start the cycle anew. I am uncertain. According to her writings, certain hosts are better than others. The more a host is prepared, the quicker the transition will be. I am sorry. This simply takes me by surprise. I would have thought I would have had some inkling, some notion. Flemeth is capable of many things. I was a fool not to suspect her capable of using me for her own self-preservation. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. Of course. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. It may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I.
Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari wilds without me. If I am present when she was slain, I cannot be certain that she will not be able to possess my body right then. So I must remain at the camp, confront her, and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. Hmm. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. Something I can help with? What is meant by someone like me? Bart. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, there were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? <laughs> My fruit? I... I... I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I do not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Thousand songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coins. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Yes? What's on your mind? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Of course, Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield the sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face Kalemba. to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slid her throat. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, 
for she is the patron huh. of all women chevalier. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orlais ruled. When Orlais was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orlais. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orlais and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet, then forget it. Small white Ferelden and wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlais. But enough about that. Let us move on. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Val Royal. Unlike other cities where the people have the lifeblood and the character, Val Royal was her own person and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Val Royal, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlais. Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orlais is very fashionable, almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes, <laughs> living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. Well, they're, they're shoes. They're pretty. Some of them anyway. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. I had my eye on a pair my shoemaker was working on. It was covered in pale blue silk with amber beads on the toe. The shoes made in Orlais were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky, fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Yeah, just look at them. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. What can I say to them? What they believe is what the Chantry says, and the Chantry is infallible, yes? Maybe I am wrong, but it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now.
Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you hear this? Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orle, there is much rivalry among the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite. And in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Something I can help with? Mm, that's an idea. I've watched you, and I do think you'd find some of my skills quite easy to pick up. Let's just go over there, away from the others. For safety, yeah? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Nice. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? There are many rumors about spies, or lesion, or otherwise. What are you referring to exactly? I admit I have done many despicable things in my lifetime. I do what I have to do. So do you. So does everybody. Sometimes we must do terrible things to get what we want. If it is any consolation, I always try to use non-violent means to achieve my ends. Some bars rely on torture to get what they want. It works effectively, as many will bend under the threat of bodily harm. But there are better ways, more subtle and kind. You will be surprised how easily a person will open up to you, even if all you offer is a listening ear. People respond eagerly to others who they believe understand them. They seek approval, friendship, sometimes love. This can be exploited. It is a game, one that can be won with little bloodshed if one plays well. You must always use the resources available to you, no? Not to do so is a waste. Everyone can be seduced by the right woman. The trick is predicting who she is and becoming her. Master the game and no one can resist you. If I might be so bold, Yes, I was quite good at it. Sometimes, all I had to do was toss a glance and a smile. Men read promises into such things, and will go to great lengths to see that promise fulfilled. I could... what? Oh, aren't you funny? I see your point. <laughs> we will slay this darkspawn using conventional means, pointy sticks and all that. But come. It is getting late, and there is much to be done. All right. What do you need? Ask away. Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good theory. <laughs> All right. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable, and you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. 
On confession day, we could go all night. Being a Templar isn't all about chasing men in skirts and hiding behind priests, you know. Yeah. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. You know, I like the way you think. But I guess if you're really curious, there's no harm in obliging. I have a couple of interesting looking molds I can show you later huh. too, if you're interested. The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Uman had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. No, I never got that far. I mostly learned about discipline and training my mind to use the abilities that Templars have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? You must miss them a great deal. Duncan and the Grey Wardens are the closest I ever got to that kind of family. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose... Grey Wardens are gone for good, either way. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. <laughs> What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar. That's where I learned most of my skills. It's really for the best. I'm not exactly the Chantry type, if you haven't noticed. I don't think I would have made a very good Templar. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. Oh, I suppose the Chantry life is good enough for some. Here, we have the chance to fight against the Blight. To actually do some good instead of sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. Yes. No, it's... Uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be. It's fine. He died a hero. They all did. Yeah, both characters on, actually share the same, same, uh, same grief. What do you need? Ask away. You never ask? Uh, all right. If you want the full explanation, I'll give it to you. The thing is, I'm used to not telling anyone who didn't already know. It was always a secret. Even Duncan was the only Grey Warden who knew. And then, after the battle, when I should have told you... I don't know, it seemed like it was too late by then. How do you just tell someone that? I... I should have told you, anyway. It was important for you to know. I guess part of me likes you not knowing. They treat me differently. I become the bastard prince to them, instead of just Alistair. I know that must sound stupid to you, but I hate that it shapes my entire life. I never wanted it, and I certainly don't want to be king. The very idea of it terrifies me. Hello? Have you met me? I... 
I'm no leader of men. I don't want to be the person sitting on the throne and making decisions that affect the lives of others. That just isn't me. I guess I should be thankful that Arl Eamon is far more likely to inherit the throne. If he's all right. Well, I hope he's right. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for not telling you sooner. I... I guess I was just hoping that you would like me for who I am. It's a dumb thing to do. I guess it's kind of a relief that you know now. Let's go. I need to go and check one thing from the Red Cliff. Blood and damnation. Indeed. Yes. So. Yes. to return to one one mission and actually see if we missed something in the castle cutscene sire i have more news um yes well it seems that the fighting has gone Enough. exactly as you... I would like to know what you intend to accomplish, Father. Should we not be fighting the Darkspawn instead of each other? The nobility should be brought into line and then the Darkspawn defeated. This is no true blight, Honora. Only Kalen's vanity demanded it be so. Beg pardon, sir. But blight or no, we may not have the manpower to face the Darkspawn soon. Kalen opposed your legions for support, did he no. not? Marek and I drove those bastards out! Not roll out the welcome for them now. We need help, Father. We cannot deal with this crisis alone. Ferelden will stand on its own. I will lead it through this, Anora. You must have faith in me. Did you kill Kalen? Kalen's death was his own doing. Games. Something I can help with? Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. Out. Oh, I rather thought I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zebran, Zeb to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. I can tell you that. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva. Very powerful and renowned for always getting the job done, so to speak. Someone went to great expense to hire this man. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the crows out here. Back where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, 
and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause. So, let me serve you instead. To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. What? You're taking the assassin with us now? Does that really seem like a good idea? Hmm. All right. All right. I see your point. Still, if there was a sign we were desperate, I think it just knocked on the door and said hello. Yeah. Welcome, Zevran. Having an Antivan crow join us sounds like a fine plan. Oh? You are another companion to be, then? I wasn't aware such loveliness existed amongst adventurers. Shameless flirt. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. <laughs> I hereby oh. pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Okay. I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orle. Uh huh. I didn't feel like talking about it then. What happened to me? Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. Uh huh. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady. To blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries. Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life has barred taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries. It takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me. Did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Liliana approached. 
Hey, Alistair. Let's see what I'm having. Oh, thank you. This, this is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? Oh, the Arl study? Yep. Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. Then he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? Thank you. I mean it. I thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from this. When he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Do you remember me mentioning this? Wow. <laughs> I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about this. <laughs> Sorry, did you say oh, so? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> See this gesture I'm making? Can you hear that? <laughs> 